Flexible filament is awesome. It's actually my favorite filament, but I don't use it because it's flexible, but because it's tough. I, I pretty much never need a flexible object, but I very, very frequently need a very tough object. Yeah, so I use this stuff to take a beating. So let's just get that out of the way because I'm sure a great percentage of you also use flexible filament for that particular need. Flexible filament is impact resistant, yes, but we're not talking about impact resistance today. In fact, we're mostly not even going to talk about flexibility. So let's get into it. First up is softness. Now, softness is obviously not the same as flexibility, which makes naming a TPU or a TPE as a flexible filament sort of strange because different flexible filaments are often differentiated using the shore hardness scale how soft or how hard something is or how resistant a material is to indentation and not by how flexible they are. And yes, flexibility and softness are related, but they are not the same. As we'll come to see, flexible filaments can differ wildly and describing them merely by shore hardness is not always the most accurate way to categorize them. Uh, and fair warning, um, these are not the easiest filaments to print. So let's talk about softness. Most of you are familiar with this. This is a TPU A95. This is our TPU A95. And A95 is the most common kind of flexible filament out there. It's got a lot of flex, but it's very, very easy to print, relatively. The lower that number, the more difficult it is going to be to print. But if you're interested in getting your settings dialed in perfectly for TPU, then we did a tutorial a while back. There is a link down in the description. Check it out. So how soft can flexible film be? Well, there isn't really a hard limit, but the softest we have is this. This is Filifex Foamy, uh, and this can go down to 51A. And I say down to 51A because this is a foaming filament. It expands as it's heated. So if you want to get down to 51A for this filament, then you reduce the flow to 70% because it expands as it is extruded. So even at 70% flow, you'll still get normal layer widths provided it is printed at the right temperature and speed. So because it foams, there are now lots of pores in the printed part, making it much lighter and softer. This is a great filament for RC projects where you might need certain parts to act as bumpers or shock absorbers that need to be lightweight, for instance with a drone part. We got a YouTube comment that suggested we could make a bike saddle out of this, and I thought that was a really cool idea, but unfortunately Filiflex, uh, they, they don't add UV stabilizers to their filament. Um, and in general, UV resistance in flexible filament can vary a lot. Flexible filament might be a TPU, but it might be a TPE. It could be polyolefin based, it could be styrene based, it could be polyamide based. Um, but even if it is a TPU, um, that can differ a lot as well because different polyurethanes are, are used for, for TPU. So yeah, flex filament can vary. Anyway, back to foaminess. This is probably the closest filament can come to something like a pillow. It is magnificently soft. It really does feel like a foam cushion. And besides RC parts, this could be a good choice for some cosplay parts. If you're a fan of that, then you really need to check out Willow Creative, who uses foam filament to make amazing things. Willow actually uses Colorfab VarioShore mostly, which we also have in the shop. It's not quite as soft as Recreus, but you can get similar lightweightness. And for a big cosplay headpiece, that matters. There is a link to Willow's YouTube down below, so check her out. What about printability? Well, as you might have guessed, yes, it is more difficult to print than typical A95 filament. Uh, and, and TPU in general can be sensitive to uh, moisture. Uh, so drying before use is advised for a lot of TPUs, but that can also vary wildly. I have noticed that most A95 TPUs uh, can go without drying for maybe a month, maybe it tops a month. Um, and that is in, in this environment, which is room temperature was about 25 degrees and the humidity in here is between 40 and 50. That varies a bit too. Other flexible filament though can be different and this is definitely one of those. This was uh, tricky to print. It strings and blobs a lot and just look at the first retraction test that I did which is ridiculous. If you want a dry TPU, most will be fine at 60 degrees for 12 hours. Recreus actually recommends drying foamy filament at 55 degrees for a minimum of one hour, which is which is quite optimistic. But I did this, and it came out pretty well, actually. Nevertheless, this filament does string and blob, so complex models uh, might be quite difficult to do. As for speed, well, it's, it's much softer than A95, so I initially cut my profile in half. So... Most parts of the print won't be printing more than 100 millimeters per second. 
However, after doing a, a little bit more testing, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that I could print faster. Uh, but it really depends on how much you want this to foam as it's extruded. I also love the sound it makes when you squeeze it. So that is soft filament. What about elastic filament? And yes, yes, there is a difference. While foamy filament is soft, it's not that elastic. Like, it's pretty elastic, but we have a way more elastic filament. This is Recreus Filiflex 60A Pro, and it is the stretchiest filament I have ever used. This has an elongation at break of 950%. You can just pull on this and it will stretch up to 950% of its initial length without breaking. So this one is the foamy filament, 51A, very soft. And this one is 60A, not so soft. That's pretty elastic, and I've always wondered if it would be suitable for a very specific use case. So this slingshot frame was printed out of Spectrum's PETG CF, and it's, it's a really pretty filament, actually. But the bands I have printed out of foamy filament, uh, our own TPU and, oh, and Filiflex 60A. The A95 does pretty terribly, as expected, it's not very elastic. Foamy was much better, but the 60A, Jesus Christ. I don't even have space to fully test this, and I, I don't think I should bring this to the park. I gotta be honest though, printing this was not easy, even for something as, as simple as this. So um, I was trying to print all of my flexible filaments on the A1, which is a good printer for, for flexible filament. Um, but I couldn't even put the filament strand in the extruder because there's this tiny, tiny, tiny hole uh, where the PTFE meets the, the extruder body and I couldn't get it in there. It's like putting a wet noodle in. Even pushing it into the PTFE tube can be difficult, but pulling it out of the PTFE tube as an extruder would is hell because it just, it stretches. I had to print this at uh, 50 millimeters per second, which is a speed that I have not used in a very long time. In fact, it can be so difficult to print that Recreus do not accept refunds if the filament doesn't work on your printer. So instead, I actually printed this on the K1 Max behind me, um, which is a printer that is not well known for its revolutionary extruder, uh, but it just, there's a lot more space for you to put in the actual strand and get caught by the extruder gear. Um, I didn't use a PTFE for this at all. Uh, I would not use a PTFE for, for this filament. You know what has lower friction than PTFE? Uh, air. Air is a great tube, use air. Stringing and blobbing for this was not a huge issue, not, not as bad as the foamy filament. Um, the, the, the difficult part in this is actually just getting it, the extruder to, to grab it and pull it through a, a PTFE tube um, because there's, there's just too much friction in the tube and it just stretches so much when it's pulled. And speaking of friction, many people consider uh, TPU to be similar to silicone uh, simply because it's a flexible plastic. But uh, silicone has very, very different uh, friction properties. It's, it's, it's non-slip. It's tacky. But TPU, TPU is not tacky. In actuality, TPU has a relatively low coefficient of friction with other materials. Um, it's not what I would describe as non-slip. Uh, however, there is a filament that does have these properties. This is SEBS, uh, styrene, ethylene, butylene, styrene, I think. It is not a TPU, it is a TPE, a styrene-based TPE. And it is similar to rubber and uh, silicone in that it does have non-slip properties. Friction depends on two materials. So on a smooth glass surface, it is quite non-slip, but on a smooth but slightly textured office desk, it is less non-slip. But just touching this, you notice how tacky it is, way, way more than TPU. Because this is a relatively unknown and slightly more expensive flexible film. You might think that this has a relatively difficult learning curve. However, it's actually very, very easy to print, like actually similar to normal A95 TPU. Uh, the only difficult part of this, and I wouldn't say it's difficult actually, is that you should use a brim because it does warp a little more than regular TPU. It's common to use a fuzzy skin texture when you want something with a bit of grip. But if you want something even better with a bit of 
squeeziness involved, maybe for like an airsoft grip, then don't use TPU, use this. You might have guessed that Recreous Filament has been in this video a lot, uh, and with good reason. If you're looking for a quality TPU filament, one maybe for a very specific need, you just gotta consider Recreous. In addition to what we showcased, they have 95A Foamy, a conductive TPU, a regular 95A, an 82A, a 70A, and a 98A fully recycled filament. If you guys have any questions on the different varieties of TPU and TPE, then let us know in the comments down below. You can also join us on our Discord server where there is talk about 3D printing on a daily basis. Uh, the link is also down below for that. We'll be back with another video next week. So until then, later. <laughs>